A really common and valid concern I get a lot about lasers is how dangerous are they? Specifically, how quickly can they start a fire? So I thought we would test it out. Oh, yep, yep, and yeah, we're on fire. In a huge disclaimer, do not try this at home. I am only doing this just to show you how fast this can happen so that you make sure you're always safe. In general, when you are running lasers, you always want to be mindful of safety. I've got a uh, spray bottle just with water to put out any quick pop-ups that might come. I'm also gonna have a for real fire extinguisher. And I'm also just gonna have this plate of 16 gauge steel that I literally can just put right on top to put anything out. For a point of quick reference, this is the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro that has a max power of 5.5 watts. This is gonna run as slow as it can and 100% power. So it's basically as close to not running at all as I can, but this should give me a pretty good idea in a very extreme situation how quickly something can pop up. And to start out, we are just using eighth inch plywood. I also do have a fan running just in general to get it the smoke out of here, uh, but there's not a lot of wind that's going directly onto this surface. Okay, we've got it set up and we are going to run it at one millimeter per second. We're getting a lot of smoke and that line is really thick. It's basically going back and forth. And actually we're gonna stop it real quick. I want to raise this up so you guys can see what's going on. And again, I'm wearing safety glasses, so you definitely would want to leave that on if you were going to do it yourself. All right. And I've got a cover over this other camera so you can kind of get in there and see what's going on. Five and a half watts on wood. Okay, so it looks horrible. So you kind of see where the actual engraved line is and you can just see that char mark all around the outside. It was starting to go through a little bit on the back but even at that speed, you would have to run it several passes to cut all the way through this eight inch plywood. All right, let's try something that might be a little bit easier. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. This time we're gonna use cardboard. All right, you definitely are starting to see a flame because actually the fan I've got to blow in the smoke out does seem to be blowing this off a pretty good job. Get it a little bit closer to get some fresh cardboard. There you see the flame popping up. And then it basically burns the cardboard. And then once it's done burning, it goes out. There we go, there's a for real one going. Okay, we're gonna go and stop this. So it is definitely burning. Uh, I've even got like ashes flipping around. Even with cardboard, we still don't get like where the entire cardboard burst on fire. Now, one thing I do want you to keep in mind is don't think this is what this would look like if you actually tried to cut out a shape. We're running this at high power, low speed because we're trying to get a crazy result. You can definitely cut cardboard, but you have to change around your settings so you're not getting that charring. The laser is just engraving that one spot that you want to get. All right, we've got some leather. Let's see how this works. Definitely getting some charring. But we're not seeing any flames. So we are getting a little bit of a fire popping up now with the leather. Uh, but it's been running for probably a solid minute now. And it's really, I think it's probably catching fire underneath and not the actual leather. But let's stop this and see what it looks like. So again, this would not be the result you'd be looking for. We did cut through the leather. Uh, and you can see we had lots and lots of charring. Now let's really burn up something that I don't want, and that is a bill from our gas company. I might actually have to move this around a little bit faster to actually get it to light. All right, yeah, you can definitely see we got a flame popping up. So we definitely burned this. It didn't totally catch fire, but I mean, it's smoking a good bit right now. So we still really haven't got the big flame result, but in true Mythbusters fashion, let's see if we actually can start a fire. In this case, we're just gonna use a paper towel. All right, here we go. Now again, there may not be enough material, but it almost goes too fast and there's nothing left to burn. So I really have to move this fairly quickly to get a flame to pop up, which you can definitely see, you can totally start a fire. Oh, yep, yep, and yeah, we're on fire. 
So you might have come into this video to see what I was gonna catch on fire, if I was gonna hurt myself or burn down my shop. Hopefully the real takeaway is that you can see how quickly a flame up can happen and how conscious you need to be of being safe. So there's really three different things you need to be thinking about in terms of safety when you're running a dio laser or a laser of any type. First is what are you gonna do in the worst case scenario? That is, what do you have this set up on top of? What's around it? Do you have fire extinguishers? Do you have safety equipment? If a flame does happen, can you get that flame out really fast? And then obviously a actual fire extinguisher is going to be your best bet. And you'll definitely ruin whatever you're trying to engrave, but at least you won't ruin your entire shop. And then next step that is going to be more preventative is actually having some type of air assist. If you have a CO2 laser, you absolutely need an air assist. Um, that comes pretty much stock with anything except for the cheaper K40 units. And that's why you always see people recommend adding an air assist into those K40s because even at five and a half watts, we're getting flame ups. You can imagine if we crank that up to 40 watts, it's really, really, really easy for those to happen. Um, and they do make air assist for diode lasers. I actually have one that I'll be installing um, to test out. And so it does a good job of getting those flame ups to stop. So not only does it save you in terms of just everything burning, but you can especially see something like this um, even though we didn't have complete flare-ups, um, you still were getting lots and lots of charring. And so the air assist also helps with that because the laser beam will only burn the spot that you actually want versus burning everything around it. And last but certainly not least, you never want to leave a laser running by itself. You always want to be around it. You always want to be watching it because things can go south really, really fast. I would say even more so than a 3D printer or even a CNC router, lasers are probably the most dangerous of these three specifically because of the issue of fire. So as long as you're being careful, lasers are actually really, really cool. You can make some pretty incredible stuff Right now, this is one of my favorites. This is the Laser Master Engraver, and I did a full review of it that you guys can check out right now. So we're gonna jump into that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. But if you're gonna break something, don't be like me. I try to catch things on fire. We're on fire.